The R-33 class airships were a class of two designed for the Royal Naval Air Service during World War I. R-33 was built by Armstrong Whitworth. R-34 was built by William Beardmore in Glasgow. The design was heavily influenced by the Zeppelin LZ-76, which had been shot down in 1916 over Great Wigborough in Essex after bombing London. Before completion, both airships were transferred to the new Royal Air Force on its formation on the 1st of April 1918. R-33 first flew on the 6th of March 1919, followed eight days later by its classmate. Both were powered by the Sunbeam Maori 4 B-12 Aero engine. On the 2nd of July 1919, the R-34 slipped its mooring at its fortune in Scotland and headed west across the Atlantic. Four days later it arrived in Manola, Long Island, and after a layer of three days headed back eastbound across the Atlantic, thus completing the first east-west crossing of the Atlantic and the first double crossing. It was a magnificent achievement, but two years later the ship was badly damaged when it hit high ground during a training flight. Nonetheless, the crew managed to limp the ship back to base at Howden in North Yorkshire, but the wind was too strong to get the ship back in the shed. It was further damaged by the gale force winds and was broken up. On completion, airship R-33 was stationed at RAF Pullham in Norfolk. Between March and October 1919, she carried out 23 flights totaling 337 flying hours, but the following year was demilitarised, civil registered and passed to the Air Ministry for experimental work. In May 1921, the British government cancelled all airship development for financial reasons. Military machines were scrapped, but the R-33, being a civil machine, was laid up in the sheds at Cardington for the next four years. In April 1925, shortly after recommissioning, the R-33 was torn from her mast at Pullham in Norfolk. Only a partial crew of 20 were on board, and the forward gas bag was damaged and deflated. The ship drifted way out over the North Sea, but with great presence of mind, the crew managed to start the engines, rig a cover over the nose, and carefully make their way back to Pullham, arriving on the following afternoon. Many were subsequently decorated for bravery. Later that same year, the airship was used for experiments concerning parasite fighters. The idea of launching parasite fighters from an airship was not new. In July 1918, Sopwith Camels had been successfully launched from the underside of Airship 23R. However, these new trials also involved the retrieval of the aircraft mid-flight. Initial trials were carried out using de Havilland 53 Hummingbird ultralight aircraft under the airship, but in-flight starting of the engines proved troublesome. The Bristol Cherub and the Blackburn Tomtit, both reasonably high compression and with toothpick propellers, seemed little inclined to windmill in the slipstream. Air Ministry engineers tried pulling the propellers over with a pole, but this proved cumbersome an enterprising young engineer called Wallace, with a certain flair for inventing, suggested a different solution. He constructed a mock-up using Meccano of an articulated arm to be lowered out of the underside of the airship in front of the aircraft, complete with a boxing glove hand that would mimic the actions of a man swinging the propeller. Unfortunately, no drawings of the Wallace Startomatic survive. I made this sketch after reading a description held in the National Archives at Kew this photograph is interesting. The oblong cutout on the left-hand side was made for lowering the startomatic arm out of the underside of the airship. Trials were a complete success, although Wopsy, the ship's cat, had to hide in Rigger Ballantyne's bunk when she saw that Wallace was accompanied on board the airship by a dog. The dog, a highly intelligent beagle, wasn't interested in chasing cats. He was there to operate the startomatic under the supervision of his master. As trials continued, the two de Havilland hummingbirds were replaced by two much larger Gloucester Grebes. The Startomatic had no bother starting the 350 horsepower Armstrong Sidley Jaguar engines on the Grebe. Notice the Air Ministry fitted doors on the underside of the R-33 to shield the Startomatic units from Bolshevik spies. The R-33 was retired at the end of 1926 due to metal fatigue in her frame and scrapped in 1928. Britain's airship dreams died with the loss of the R101 at Beauvais in France in October 1930. Wallace left the Air Ministry to continue inventing. Later inventions included a device for humanely catching rabbits. 
and a self-funded lunar program that proved the moon was made of cheese. Thank you for watching.